some encouragement in. Turn your Bibles over to Ezra, chapter number 4, and verse number 21. Ezra, chapter number 4, and verse number 21. Ezra chapter 4 and verse 21. The Bible teaches us that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and that they are profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto every good work. Sometimes there are very familiar passages that we know about, but every now and then while we are studying, we will run across something that really has a good message in it that we may have missed the first time. And one of the things that encourages me is the way that God has already mapped out a plan for our success in what he wants us to do, even when we are unaware of what he is actually doing. There may be things There may be things that catch us by surprise, however, that does not catch God on God. For the Bible says in Isaiah 46 and verse number 10 that God knows the end from the beginning. Now, notice here in Ezra 4 and verse number, number 20. 21. Notice that when the king gives this edict, notice what, what he says. He says, give ye now commandment to cause these men to seek and that this city be not built until another commandment shall be given from me. Now notice that when King Aristus gave this command, he used the statement, I want the building to cease until another commandment is given from me. What I picked up on was that last little line until another commandment is given from me. Because normally, when a Medo-Persian, during the Medo-Persian Empire, when the king gave a command, according to Daniel 6 and verse number 8, it could not be changed. But God had already fixed it to where this same king was going to do what God wanted him to do when he said Nehemiah. Now, in order to understand what is going on, uh, on, on here, let's take a look at what is happening in this, uh, in this particular book. You remember that because of the sins of Judah, God allowed King Nebuchadnezzar, or some folks say Nebuchadnezzar, I know it, to take them into captivity for 70 years. Now the people have returned from captivity and they have started rebuilding the temple that was destroyed by King Nebuchadnezzar. Now come with me to Ezra chapter 3. 
All right, in verse number number one, because I want to notice what happens to bring the people to this particular point. In Ezra chapter three, all right, in verse number number one, someone read this scripture for me. Ezra chapter three, all right, in verse number number one. It has been approximately 430 years since Solomon's temple had been built. Some scholars say around 966 BC. Notice what happens when the people return from captivity. All right, Ezra 3 and verse number 1. All right, read it to report. And when the seventh month was come, and the children of Israel were in the city. The people gathered themselves together as one man to Jerusalem. Now, they gathered together what? They are now unified. They now have a new sense of reverence. They are ready to rebuild the temple. Now, I don't have time, but before they started rebuilding the temple, rebuilding the temple, the first thing that they did was that they rebuilt the altar in order to worship God. But notice what happens after the foundation has been laid. Look at Ezra 3 and verse number 11. Ezra chapter 3, all right, and verse number 11. All right, let's look at what, what happened. Well, a right, start at verse number 18. All right, read it for us. And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, they set the priests in their apparel with trumpets, and the Levites, the sons of Asaph, were assembled to praise the Lord after the ordinance of David, king of Israel. All right, keep on reading. And they sang together by chorus in praising and giving thanks unto the Lord, because he is good, for his mercy endureth forever toward Israel. And all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. All right, so, so we know that everyone is praising, is excited, right? But look at how the same event can cause a different reaction dependent upon your experience in life. Yes. All right, look at verse number 12. And many of the priests and Levites and chief of the fathers who were ancient men that had seen the first hour when the foundation of this house was laid before their eyes, wept with a loud voice, and many shouted about for joy. Now wait a minute. You have some weeping and some expressing joy. Yes. Now, I have a question for you. Why was it that the old men were weeping while the young folks were all excited? What were some of the reasons for joy, first of all? And then I want to look at why were the older folks weeping and some of the younger folks are excited? Anyone? Now you all can. Uh, anyone? Quickly. You have the older people weeping. They have seen, all right, Anybody, all right. Yeah, all the people are weeping because they saw the kingdom in its, the, the temple in its glory, and it doesn't look like it did when they first saw it. Sometimes experience will give you a different perspective. But if I had not seen or known about the first one, then this one looks very good to me. Yes, sir. If if this is the only chocolate cake that I have ever tasted, then it tastes good to me. 
But if I have had grandmother's chocolate cake, and I taste this one, I have something to compare to. That's it. Well, that's why older people sometimes don't get excited over the same things that younger individuals do. But now make no mistake about it now. There was a reason for joy on both sides. Number one, the fact that they were back home. Yes. See, while they were in captivity, they would gather together in bands around the river of Kiva. Psalms 137, verse number, number one. Now they have an opportunity to really gather together at the place of the house of the Lord. So they are excited because the temple, the foundation, has been laid. That means that God's mercy has been extended and we are now back home. Oh, but watch, watch this here. When, whenever you start doing something good, you always need to be aware that the enemy is going to get busy. But in order to deal, now God has already worked this out. But in order to deal with the enemy, you have to recognize, number one, that the enemy is wise. But you have to be wise. You see, Jesus made a statement one, one day in Matthew 10, 16, I believe it is. He said, be wise as what? Serpents. But be what? Harmless as dirt. Turn, turn around with me. Look at what the enemy starts to do. Go over to Ezra chapter number four. All right, and verse number one. Now look, while you are turning there, let, let me mention something uh, to you. Both Haggai and Zechariah had to encourage the ones who had seen the first temple yes, not to be so discouraged. Yes, sir. Haggai told them in Haggai 2 and verse number 9, he said the glory of this temple is going to be better than that one of the first. Zechariah told him in Zechariah 4 and verse number 8 through 10, he said, don't despise small things. Yes, sir. You know, sometimes things may not start out with the same level as the finished product last time. But just hang in there yes, and keep on working. It will work out after a while. Yes, you know, if I had time, sometimes young folk become so discouraged yes. because they look at what mama and daddy has. Mama and daddy have. And they decide, well, I want that right now. Right. Well, now like they have taken mama and daddy. 30 years to get that house and to get that car. You just gonna have to wait a little while, but just keep on going. It may not come right now, but God is in the plan. Yes, but look at the enemy, because you all know what? Now, I have been around uh, many years. Whenever you start doing something good. The devil really gets busy. Yes. I remember in Acts 6 and verse number 1, that in those days when the number 
of the disciples were multiplied, there arose among, among the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected. The devil is going to get busy. Now, watch this here quickly. Come on, Zechariah 4. Uh, uh, all right, in verse number of a one, read it a report. Now, when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity built the temple unto the Lord God of Israel. Then they came to Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers and said unto them, Let us build with you, for we seek your God as ye do, and we do sacrifice unto him since the days of El Shaddai, El Hadad, I mean El Hadad, king of Ashur, which brought up uh, up hither. I got a question. They said, let us help you build. What's wrong with accepting a little help? Well, they said, for we see your God just like you do. We offer sacrifices to your God just like you do. I have a question, church. Were they totally? Well, were they totally telling our bosses? Were they lying all together? Watch this here now. Were they telling any of the truth? Did they worship Job? Yes. See, in order for a lie to really work, if it's a naked lie, you probably know it's a lie. Amen. But if it has some rags of truth on it, that really makes it difficult. See, the problem wasn't that they didn't worship Jehovah, but what was the problem? Something we have to be careful of even right now. Something that the first century church hates. What was the problem? It wasn't that they didn't worship Jehovah. But what was the problem? Huh? It wasn't a total commitment because they worship all the other idol gods too. See, to them, Jehovah was one of the gods. We're not being just one of them. And being the only one, that's something totally different. You go home and tell your wife you are one of my women. Oh, no, man. Y'all, yeah. you and I are not. Uh-uh. You better go home and tell the truth. You are the only one. Are we all together now? Be careful who you join alliances with. Because the Bible is still right. Be ye not deceived. Evil communication corrupt good morals. The Bible is still right. That friendship with the world is enmity against God. James 4, 4, verse 15, 13, 3. But look at how Zerubbabel and the chief answered them. What would you have said to them? They said, now, we want to help you. What would you have said to them? No, we don't want your help. Well, now, look at the wisdom that they use. All right, read it for us. For Zerubbabel and Yeshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, You have nothing to do with us to build a house unto our God. But we ourselves together will build unto the Lord God of Israel as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, has commanded us. Now, what, uh, what wisdom do you see here? They say, now, number one, you have nothing to do because we don't worship all of the others. We only worship Jehovah. But what wisdom do you see 
in how they answered them. They didn't want, uh, they didn't want them to, uh, they didn't want to have anything to do with the building. They wanted to do because it was evil. And, you know, our God wanted to pure love Okay. All right. We don't want your help, but sometimes when you answer folks, it's good to use wisdom that they cannot come back again. Because what they said was King Cyrus commanded us. Even if we wanted to help, which we don't, King Cyrus yeah. commanded us. We are obeying the king. Yes, sir. You know, sometimes when you get ready to answer folks, uh, the best thing to do, well, the best thing I've found in some situations is you don't have to tell the person that they're wrong. Just lay out the facts. Yes, sir. Yes. You know, somebody said, you know what? Uh, you should do this here. All you got to do is just go to the policy and quote the policy. Yes, sir. And that's it. Yes, sir. You don't have to say, no, I don't want to do it. No, I just quote the policy. They use wisdom here. They just say, uh-uh. The king has commanded us. But watch is here. When the devil tries you one way, don't think that he is going to stop at just that one way. Look at verse number Ezra 4 and verse number 11. Because notice what these men do. And now, I like this here. Ezra 4, 11. They wrote a letter to the king. Read it to report. This is the copy of the letter that they sent unto him, even unto Artaxerxes the king, thou servest the men on this side of the river, and at such a time. Be it known unto the king that the Jews which came up from thee to us are come unto Jerusalem, building the rebellious and the bad city, and have set up the walls thereof, and joined the foundation. Now wait a minute. Now the first group said, we want to help you build. Yeah. Now they are telling the king, oh no, they are building to revolt against you. Yes, sir. And because of the trouble that the king was at, he couldn't afford to lose any more revenue. So look at, at the reason that they gave for really warning him. Keep on reading. Be it known now unto the king that if this city be built and the walls set up again, then will they not pay toll, tribute, and custom, and so thou shalt damage the revenue of the king. Now, notice, king, you won't get your property tax, poll tax, excise tax, if you allow them to continue. Oh, these, they are small. Watch this here, though. Quickly, read it, folks. Now, because we have maintenance from the king's palace, and it was not meet for us to see the king's uh, dishonor. Therefore, have we sent and certified the king. Now, notice what they were basically are saying. You know, we have maintenance. Uh, actually, that idea comes from uh, salt. You know, king, we are really here with you, king, we feel like that we owe it to you yes, sir. to protect you. You know, the word that they use here, that, that is used here uh, in school, sometimes we say that that's the word, that the word salary comes from, salt money. Yes, sir. Well, they were saying, king, we just could not afford 
to allow you to be his own. It worked. It worked. But now watch this here. That's where when I started at Ezra 421, notice that the king issued the decree, but he said it's going to last now until I give another command. Where well, the people stopped building the temple for at least 14 years. They didn't do anything. Now watch this. Ezra and Nehemiah do not tell the whole story. Haggai fills in the gap. The people stopped working on God's house. But they kept on working on their own house. Now, God's house is lying away. I'm not doing anything toward God's house, but I'm working on my house. I got a question, church. You know what? Sometimes when you stop, it's hard to start back up again. You know, when you have been faithful and you stop being faithful, it's like the longer you don't do anything, the less you really want to do anything. And then when I look at this, what encouraged me was that God had already mapped out a plan, but the problem was he had to get the people started again. Hey, God told them in the right. Hey, God warned a report. God wanted, wanted to know, you know, is it time for my house to continue to lie in wait for your house? You are continuing to build your seal house. But look at what was happening when they were doing their thing, but not doing God's thing. Look at Haggai 1 and verse number or, uh, verse number or, uh, 6. Then we will come back quickly to uh, uh, Ezra chapter number or, uh, 5. Uh, 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 all right, Haggai 1, verse number or, uh, 6. What does the Bible say? You have sown much and bring in little. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you have not filled with drink. You clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. You know what? When you leave off doing what God wants you to do, I don't care what you do, you really won't have the peace of mind to really be happy. Now, I, I didn't say you could have a good time. Oh, but there's always something that is lacking when you know I'm not in harmony with God Almighty. Notice when the people, what made the people start back to build? Watch this, Kevin. Sometimes it's hard to start back. Once you have stopped a long time, because of the stigma of failure. See, when you start something one time and it doesn't work, it's hard to go back and start it the second time. See, I was praying one time and it just didn't seem to happen like I wanted. So I stopped praying. How do I start that and get over the failure that it didn't work the first time? Always remember that God is still looking out for his people. Amen. Look at Ezra 5 and verse number or 5. Uh, Ezra 5 and verse number or 5. What does the Bible say? But 
For the eye of that God was upon the elders of the Jews, that they could not cause them to see, till the matter came to Darius, and then they returned, answered by letter concerning this matter. Now notice, they stopped building the building until Darius, until the second year of the reign of King Darius. During Darius' second year, they started back to rebuilding the temple. What I found interesting, I believe Darius went in as the king around 522 BC. They started back to build the or a temple around 520 BC. But when they started back to build, now we have some enemy now coming to try to stop us the second time. All right, watch this here. Look at Ezra 5. Uh, all right, in verse number 11. Ezra, well, no, uh, yes, all right, Ezra 5, verse number 11. We don't have time to, to get the other. Ezra 5 and verse number e, e, 11. But before we get that one, we have got to get um, Ezra chapter 5 and verse number 6. Read it a report. Ezra 5 and verse number or a 6. All right, read Copy it. of the letter that the name governor on this side of the river and Shethamaz Bosnai and the companion of that name, which were on this side of the river, sent unto Darius the king. Give a read. They, they sent a letter unto him, wherein was written thus, unto Darius the king, all peace. Be it known unto the king that we went into the province of Judea, to the house of the great God, which is builded with great stone, and timber is laid in the wall. And this work goeth fast on and prosper in their hands. Then asked we those elders and said unto them thus, Who commanded you to build this house and to make up these walls? We asked their names also to certify thee, that we might write the name of the men that were in the chief of that were the chief of them. Now they asked them, told down. We want to know who gave them this authority. Watch the answer that they gave. Look at verse number 11 and verse number 12. Read it the report. And thus they returned, thus answered, saying, We are the servants of the, of the God of heaven and earth, and build the house that was built these many years ago, which a great king of Israel built it and set up. Number one, they knew their own history. Yes, sir. But now watch this here. Keep on reading. But after that our fathers had provoked the God of heaven unto wrath, he gave them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and the Chaldean, who destroyed the house and carried the people away into battle. Now, watch this here. I imagine that the man of the Oh, five Okay. Watch this here quickly. They did not shy away from why they were in the condition they were in. Amen. They said, now look, we are building the house that we're rebuilding the house that was built. We are in this condition because our father disobeyed our God. But then notice something that they also did that I don't have time to read. They told them, you go check the record and you will see who gave us the authority to reveal. Amen. Church, listen, never try to run away from or fail to admit what is the truth of the matter. We are having to do this because we disobey God. But we know why we have authority 
You just have him to go check the record. Amen. And when the king went and checked the record, look and see, God had said a long time ago that this was going to happen. Darius came back in Ezra 6 and verse number 7. Look at how God had worked this, worked this out. Ezra 6 and verse number 7. He said, let the work of this house of God alone. Let the governor of the Jews and the elders build this house of God in his place. You all know what? God had already fixed it. Amen. This house Amen. is going to be rebuilt. Amen. You know, you sin, I punish you, you are back, but I have already worked out the plan for the house. Amen. All you got to do is just get up and go back to work. Amen. Some of us have stopped working. We have become, well, I mean, well, some folks somewhere <laughs> have stopped working and have become unfaithful. How do you start back again? Know that God has already mapped out a plan for you to get started again. Pick up, get started. When folks question you, just look at them and tell them the truth. I was faithful. I fell off. But I thank God. I'm back up now. What was once carrying me, I'm not carrying it now. I'm not perfect. But one thing I do know, I serve a perfect God. And I'm back on the road again. When I read, when when I when I read that, because I don't care who you are, sometimes you will get this illusion, this courage. Want to give up, but you just don't know how to stop just going on. Put that foot out there. Because God has already worked out the best. Thank y'all. Thank you. Message on this morning. Uh, the men will meet in the conference room to get their assignments this morning. And again, help you happy Father's Day. Let us bow. Our Father God in heaven, we are so thankful for this morning, the opportunity you have given us to assemble here to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for our, our teaching on this morning. We thank you for everything that he has done and what he has given us uh, to the word, Father. Uh, forgive us of our sins and those things we have done, thought, contrary to our will. These things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Amen.